Professor Mack, well, yes, indeed, uh, talking about uh, a continuous focus, really, on some of those actions being taken in preparation for the forthcoming general elections, all aimed at ensuring we have a smooth run. We've got Mr. Chris Akiri, who is a legal practitioner, is also the legal advisor to the editorial board of the Saunders Papers. Thank you for coming on this morning. It is my pleasure. Now to talk about vote buying, uh, they're asking the FCC to help out in this. But one of the questions I just kept going through my mind is, um, what really can we say constitutes vote buying? Because when you go to the field reporting this matter, there are all kinds of actions, all kinds of methods that they deploy in ensuring that they get votes. But how do you see this playing out, EFCC wading in to prevent vote buying? That constitutes what an electoral offense, isn't it? Yes, it is. You see, uh, we have what we call electoral offenses, and when we, we have what we call electoral irregularities. You know, um, when you say electoral irregularities, maybe the papers never came in time, they should have started at 7.30, they now started at 10 o'clock. Uh, somebody who should have brought the van is just coming in and so on. Can the FCC this, do anything about that? No, no. These are electoral irregularities. Oh. But when we talk of electoral offenses, mm -hmm. vote buying, and what's the definition of vote buying? If there is time, we'll go, go into it. Vote buying is when you use money to entice people to vote for you, either, either during the election or even before that. And that is why sections 90 and 91 of the Electoral Act 2010, as, as amended by the Electoral Act 2011, uh, you know, if you talk of section 90, it says the, the um, INEC shall have power to place a limitation on the amount of, uh, of money that can be spent during an election. And then Who enforces that? I beg your pardon? Who should enforce that? It is, it is, uh, the, the, it is uh, well, uh, it said they shall have the power to place that limitation. But INEC hasn't got the power, prosecutorial powers, to do anything. So it is now, it is now the turn of ESCC, you know, these uh, agency security agencies, you know, agencies against fraud, like ICPC, like the EFCC to come in. So it, it falls track, within their purview. Yeah, to track the number. Because when you see section, uh, section 91, it tells you the amount of money which each of the following candidates, the president, the governor, the senator, the House of Representatives person, can spend during an election. Shouldn't be more than that. What they're intending to do is for, for them to say, one billion naira for the president. That's what he can spend during an election. 200 million naira for the, the governor, you know, 40 million naira for a senator, 20 million naira for, for a House Representative person, and so on and so forth. Well, it is believed that they spend actually more than that. Well, do you agree? But with that? that is where something, some, an agency like the EFCC has to come in. But does the EFCC have the capacity, considering the defensive means uh, of acquiring those monies and spend it for elections at yes. election times? Do you yes. think that the, it has the capacity to really, if, if it cannot even prosecute, but trace? First yeah. of all, those monies. Yeah, well, like I said, the EFCC cannot, I mean, uh, INEC cannot trace. They can say this is, this is the amount of money. They place a limit on the amount of money you can spend during the election. But that's all they can do. They, they have to leave the rest to all these uh, agencies against fraud and so on, ICPC, EFCC, and so on, to track this thing down to the last cobble, how much you spent. Where did you get this money and so on? Does that include monies that maybe friends can spend on my behalf? Uh, well, friends, friends are not allowed to spend on your behalf like that. Either friends, personal or corporate. If they go print posters for me, how would I, what if I didn't know that they were doing some of those well, things? Well, those things will not be calculated as part of the money allowed to be spent during any election. They, they will be calculated as part of that money. Even if your friend did it and you didn't do it by yourself, that will be calculated as part of the expenses allowed. All these things must be strictly enforced. You go to the United States, you don't cross that limit. How much you should spend. Mm -hmm. You go to England, same thing and same thing in France. You know, I'm just thinking because this is not as straightforward as maybe that meeting between INEC and AFCC may have appeared. 
Uh, there are politicians who have been in this for a while. For yes. instance, if you need to contest, even if it's governorship or House of Assembly or the federal elections in the, in the uh, National Assembly, yes. you go to your community, you see the chief, you see the Oba, you see all of those people. Is the politician going to report to EFCC that, oh no, they asked me to donate this amount of money before I can even do anything, and even if I donate, I have to join the queue. Those are all part of the challenges. Yes, you see, well, you know, like when you, like you said, you're correct when you say they're very difficult to monitor. You know, for example, somebody, um, a politician going to his village, to his community, to the, to the new batch of rice and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Henceforth, the way I understand the meeting held between EFCC chairman, uh, acting chairman, and I mean, uh, EFCC, uh, yes, acting chairman, and uh, INEC. Uh, uh, head yesterday is that as from now on if you should go to your community to donate a bag of rice one EFCC man is accompanying you. So one cannot be humanitarian anymore to just say well no, I just want to help out my community. No but you can't be humanitarian when law is concerned. You should spend no more than one, maybe 200 million then you don't spend more than 200 million. Because as of today, every, almost all Nigerians are angry about the, this money. Because when you, say, when you say a governor should spend 200 million naira, then you make politics, you know, money. You know, Is if, you, don't, if be, you are not a money bag, then in you are not in to that, politics. Yes. You know, this ceiling has always been there yes. in the Electoral Act. But we have never had maybe any of those authorities say, well, this particular party, this individual, yes. even if it's a ruling party particularly, yeah, so can they ever say, well, you spent more than the ceiling required or stipulated by law, and besides, you even dipped your hands into state funds? Yes. Have, it, that has never been established. Now, well, you see, um, the law has been there, and it has been honored more in the breach than in the observance. And uh, they are, everybody is aware of that. This time around, they are insisting that the law must be enforced. The spirit and this, the letter of the law must be enforced. Seriously. And that's what they are doing. And I'm very happy about it. INEC cannot do everything about it. And that's why it's going to EFCC that can accompany them and then track how much, whatever amount of money you spend. How, how, how true do you think? Because uh, the EFCC acting uh, chairman, uh, Margo, did say in that clip we watched, that he's really committed and he wants to assure INEC that this will follow through. But what guarantees are there? Because uh, you've got several sources of funding, some that we don't even know, and uh, the, the kind of intrigues that come into how uh, the process of even funding an election comes yes. through. So are there any guarantees do you see, for instance, that well, will substantiate and let uh, Margo's words to, I, to INEC stand? Well, we, we, I think we will just hold him respons accountable to whatever he has said. He has said it now, and everybody has taken note of it. We are going to hold him accountable. You said you are going to do this. Are you sure this, this one has taken place and so on? Because every, in every election, how much you spend matters. You don't buy vote. Come on, make yourself acceptable to the people. Do what should be done. Fulfill all, the, uh, you know, all your man manifestos, not to buy votes. Buy vote, buying vote is illegal, you know, and it, 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 the FCC is now going to be held responsible. Now that they came out to say it, you know, they, that law, like I said, had always been honored more in the breach. The money had just been there, I should not spend beyond this limit, should not spend beyond that limit. But it has never, like you said, it has never worked, but henceforth, I'm sure it's going to work now that they've come out publicly to say so.